question. Hi, Brooke. Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you I for just, um, it. I had, you know, my, I wasn't in New York when, when a member of our team heard you talk and found you so inspiring. So we have to get Brooke. Oh, we God. Brooke. Well, so, we are um, of, of like mind and, and what you're doing, you know, is so in, important and, and, you know, just hearing what you're also doing for women over 40, 50, 60, you know, we need this representation and we need to be a part of the dialogue, you know? Yeah, I think it is. It is. I, I was recently weirdly reframing it, Brooke, because I was thinking even the word woman over 40 feels to an extent there's an alienation yeah. in it. All right. And recently I was thinking, is it just that we're grown ups? You know, we're grown-ups, and also I try not to use the word aging. Yeah. I try to focus on vitality. Yeah. You know, just because that's the, if we're going to change the conversation, I mean, don't, do you feel like it is shifting a bit? I, well, I, we never use the word ever. It's like saying the Scottish play, if you're an actress, all right? <laughs> but we never use the word AA in this term, anti-aging, because right. I feel that we were, you and I grew up, fed ads that were put on models of 20 uh, advertising to us anti-aging cream and i don't believe that there's this sense of you know i don't think you and i want to stop going down the path of life because the path of life for us with its bumps and everything is fascinating we learn every year so you know what we bring to the table now is that amalgamation brook of everything we've learned like the community you're building and i'm building it's to bring together women who feel that they've They've been on a journey, you know, nobody can say, God, I've had the most incredible life or I've only had a terrible life. So no. how do you then, I think it's, how can we address it? There are certain times I've always felt when I've made over women in that previous career that you'll get to a stage and you'll kind of slightly be lost in yourself. And that can happen, you know, the biggest time probably it happens is perimenopausally and menopausally because maybe the body shifts and we go through certain, you know, hormonal changes. But that's a time when I think women can feel more invisible. And it's how do you always feel present and visible in your life? And, and also we, what we come to the table with now is needs to be acknowledged, you know, the, all of the experience and, the, and the, the times that we've fallen and the times that we've had to suffer through the many different things. I, I started my own, my own podcast on iHeart. It's called Now What? And it's because those pivotal moments in our lives, women go through them. Mel, everybody goes through them. And I think that that's a very unifying thing. And especially, I find myself at 57, having lived so much and experienced so much, and I kept picking myself up. And, you know, through miscarriage or divorce or death, you know, you, you sort of, you experience all these things. And you also, in the caretaking world, we're taking care of everybody else. And, and it feels as if now this time really is a new beginning for, for, for myself, but also for women who are in this stage of growth in their life. And I think it's a wonderful yeah. word you use, that word, new beginnings. We did so superficially, but it meant so much to me, this exact word is when we'd come out of COVID, and I think many of us, there was a real shift, a paradigm shift of that because we spent so much time on our own. There was that disconnect. And then going back into the world, there was that sense of, you know, getting used to things again, getting used to being around people, getting used to being in conversations. I think your daughters and my daughter also had a huge things happen to them because it was should have been the summer of love for them 16 and they were sitting at home locked up so there was such a shift that we've had for both generations and that sense new beginnings feels incredibly positive brooke i love that you've chosen those words and we did we did you know these products at the beginning of coming out of covid and i called them new beginnings because i thought that's how we have to look at it you know well but um i was during covid and i said this is crazy i said I feel less complicated, more confident, sexier now, and I'm ready to have a new beginning. So I said, for me, beginning is now. You know, that's, what, that's where it is. And, and I think it's important that we really do create that community as you've done and as I'm beginning to do with 
bin, I call it. I, I, I always say, think of it all the stuff you want to just throw in the bin. That you oh, don't. I wondered if you knew the resonance of the word bin, because it Most is you, that new beginnings. But, and, but in England, it's like, throw it in the trash and let's move on. Yep, let's move yeah. on. And then there's that one bin that you keep the things that are really precious to you, that you've learned that you don't want to live without. Friendship. Yeah visions of yourself, versions of, of, of who you are and, and how you talk about yourself and how you put yourself in the world. You know, I used to, that self-deprecating humor was a huge, huge piece of my comedy career. And it, it really worked, it served me, but you've gotta be really careful with it because I'm, I became so used to putting myself down to make other people feel comfortable or to not be threatening or I'm not trying to steal your husband and like, you know, whatever it is, it's like, I am not a threat. But in order to do that, I learned how to sort of make myself smaller. And it did have a purpose and it did work, but it doesn't fit in the same way that it that I used it when I was younger. And you have to be really careful because you start believing the negative things that you repeat and say yeah. about yourself. Oh, I'm the big yeah. girl. I'm the athletic one, which in my business means I'm just not skinny. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but you say those things over and over and you start kind of thinking less of yourself. And it's also changing the conversation we have in our own head about where we are in this time of our life, which to me is so full. And it yeah. can also be nothing after doing so much all the time. It doesn't have to be start a new company, learn how to fly a plane. It can be but we're not encouraged really i always say when there's marketing it's always to like the 20 year olds or your you know dentures and independents you know and but i and think it's not and i do think the world is changing and i do see that change and you know i am a ceo i employ 200 people you know we try and offer women this kind of alternative and it took it was a journey brook over the, you know the last seven years of growing into being that responsible for other people. But like you say, and, you, and that to me was a huge new beginning because I've had three different careers and this is my kind of third career. And I don't see it as a reinvention, I see it as an evolution. And I think that's really important too because we don't want to kind of dump everything we've learned. It's about how do we bring it all together into that world now? And whether you're, you know, I think there are certain things that it's about what life tips can we give that are interesting and one thing I do think it's interesting, and this is why I think community is important, is we can be so influenced by being a certain kind of person for your daughters, for your husband, for your parents, for your friends. And we all have different friends as well who some drain our energy, some, you know, never talk about themselves and do the total opposite. And it's, you know, I think it's like getting that confidence to feel who is good for my life. You know, it's very difficult to make those kind of decisions, but we can have people who drain who we want to be because they always want to drag us back to being what maybe is comfortable for them. And, and you know, having communities enables women to go to your community or my community of Trinity Tribe and just think, who do I want to be today? And let me test it out with a group of like-minded women and not be judged and not be put down and not be told I'm too old, too young, too this, too that. Right, and also, you know, with regards to fear, a lot of it is fear-based, you know, fear of failure, fear of um, not, or not being like everybody else or fear, it's just, and what is interesting, I find a lot of women um, get afraid because either we're so used to being talked down to or, you know, people mansplaining things to us or, and society has just kind of supported that. But the real community, I mean, when they say it takes a village, it does. And you use the word tribe and, you know, we, we just call it beginnings now community because that's what I do these um, sort of Zoom calls with, um, you know, 50 women over 40 or over 50 or whatever. And, um, and to hear them all talk and encourage each other, to go out of what would be a comfort zone or something that's just maybe not comfortable, but just familiar, you know, and you're, you, it's just familiar and to shift the way we, um, I do, I, I see it as because of your platform, mine, 
um, we're starting to have a different kind of place. And I always say it's not, you know, it's not this, I am woman, hear me roar, you know, it's I am woman, hear me more. You know, there's more of me. It's like, they're like brushstrokes. It's like, I look at this sort of painting of my life and every single experience is just added more contour and more depth to, to the, to the story and to the, to what it is to have lived this life. And now people always say, oh, you've reinvented yourself over and over and over. And I said, no, 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 I have not reinvented. Like you said, I haven't thrown out the old. I've mm. taken what works, what doesn't, what doesn't, I leave. But what I've done is just revealed more of, of who I am because I've learned more of who I am. And it's only been through yeah. these experiences. And, and, and it's, it's exciting to know that there's more to come. And it's not meant to be a pressure. It's meant to be sort of just exciting. And, and, and it's good to encourage women to feel sexy and feel all that they are. And it, you know, it's interesting. I feel there was this present, I broke. Feel yeah, present, present in their life, because I think that there is that sense, I know from speaking to many women, that sense that feeling invisible. I feel it, I find it ironic tonight, Brooke, I'm wearing black because I always wear color. And, um, and just like things of, you know, if you are a woman who always wears black, I nearly want to get my blue jumper that I was going to bring to wear over because I, so, I mean, it's so rare I wear black. It's quite ironic if you haven't met me before. Okay. It's about how, what are the tips and tricks that we can say, you know, challenge yourself on this. So, you know, if you, if you feel there's an element to you that you don't feel heard so much anymore. I remember years ago, I did a, a sort of makeover thing with the partner I did what not to wear with, but she wore an age suit and, and we did facial aging on her. And she walked down the street and she said, what was incredible training, this is when we were in our early forties, is how much people physically bumped into me because they literally didn't see me, okay? And that's something that I'm like, I will be, you know, putting my own, uh, I'm putting the old bolts in my grave, uh, in my box, you know, because I will never ever, and I never, any woman I meet, I never want her to feel invisible. And if she's feeling invisible, it's about how can you step out of that? How can you, you know, wear color, just like wear color on your body, find that one color that makes you feel good when you're feeling low, it might be yellow, it might be whatever color. How can you rethink your skincare and makeup routine? How can you embrace how you're going to exercise so that you're looking after your body. It's not about thin or fat or all these horrendous shaming ways people address bodies. It's about, for me, like when I think about exercise, I think about, I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro when I'm 80. You know, this, you know, I want to, my body to work for me as long as it can. So I need to look after it. I need to nurture it. So everything that I want to do, my body will go, I'm there for you, honey, and I'm going to help you do it. You know, and I've so. had a, a little bit of the, the same but opposite situation where I've I've hit my body so hard. I mean, I have yeah. I have worked my body for so many decades, and on Broadway and eight shows a week, and I've got metal in multiple places of my body. And for me, I had to learn to be okay not beating my body up on that yeah. level. Yeah they fit to be ready to and it was a real exercise in taking care of myself in a in a very different way i have this amazing therapist i've known for god since the 80s and she i always wanted to she said i want you and i want women to be their biggest self you know not just parts of it but really sort of step into and be visible to ourselves and that's in and, and it's not easy. I mean, I will say it's not easy. And, but, but once you get a little taste of it, yeah. it is, it's a revelation because it doesn't make you arrogant. I used to think it meant I was arrogant or I was, you know, self-obsessed or I, somehow if I really looked at my accomplishments and owned them and owned how much I've lived, somehow that made me, you know, when I was a little kid in school, if I got an A on a paper, I would hide it away. If I got anything less than, you know, a V or something, I would leave it out. And I would sort of say, oh, look at all these things I got wrong. And there was this like, I couldn't understand why I did that. And 
it was, I wasn't living in my biggest self. And now I know that yeah. term a lot, but, but it, it is true. My, my, the therapist, she said to me, she's like, just go own who you, what you've done and who you are. And we all have that journey. Mm. You know, it doesn't have to be played out in, a, in the public, like yeah. my crazy life has been, but that's just, that's just one story, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think there are, you know, this thing of being present is, it is definitely, and we champion women who are over 40, because you and I are both the same age. But I think also, I can look back, Brooke, and I can look at the, I hated my 20s. I felt so unconfident. And I, you know, in my teens, I was terribly bad at school. And I never was scared of, well, how do I do about this being an A minus? Because I was getting a C, all right? So I just didn't even think there was hope for me. And I, and I let go. And I didn't oddly have a family who, I think we had opposite families, because I heard you sharing something. I was looking at your Instagram feed. But I had a family who never expected I'd go and do further education or go to university, who never got involved, never never got involved. I, I mean, I didn't see my parents much. I was a, from a very old fashioned English family where, you know, I went to boarding school very young. And so I had to kind of make those rules myself. So if we go to both how we bring up our children, you know, and, and what I, I think I heard you sharing something about that even because you, you know, your kids are off to college, my daughter's going off to college uh, next September. And just how we are parents and how different that is from maybe when we were kids, you know, what if it's like you pull things from your past, you think that that's what I'll never do. And sometimes you find yourself doing it and you think, oh my God, I'm looking at my mother in the mirror. And other times you think, yes, I'm not repeating that pattern. I'm giving her, you know, the sort of platform to be the, the person she wants to be and not to try and guide it too much or judge it too much, you know, which is what we both probably felt very much from a different generation and no fault of our parents' own. I didn't have, uh, it never occurred to me that I could have my own opinions, <laughs> my own yeah. opinions. I would ask my mother if I liked this food. Do I like this? You know, she's like, my, my mom was so afraid of losing me because I was the only thing that mattered to her in her life. Oh, More than yeah. herself, which is another huge issue. But she wanted me to be constantly needing of her. And so for me individuation didn't just was not going to happen you know and i remember it was so hard for me because i didn't know how to be my own person and i've always said to to my daughter my one daughter i've um there was never going to be any problem she was going to be her own person that was it <laughs> no matter what <laughs> but the other one my older one i was so conscious of giving her independence so that by the time she did go to college she wasn't terrified mm -hmm. or she told me just last week, just, she said, mom, I'm just so thankful that you don't judge me. She said, I tell you everything and you don't, you don't have judgment. And I, and she said, I've seen so many of my friends, parents judge them harshly and, and, or take whatever that behavior is as a reflection on them, you know, mm -hmm. and we have to teach our girls, especially that these are things that their independence is beautiful, you know, and I learn from them. And, you know, I think that it, it's an important, important lesson that we do teach, you know, I've kept a lot that my mother gave me and humor and, and joy and wanting to experience and, and learn about people. That was very much the way she lived her life. But, um, but I also, uh, there's so much that I left because her lack of self-confidence was really detrimental to her happiness. And, mm -hmm. and she, she died in an unfortunate way, like unhappy and alone, not mm -hmm. alone there, but the, and that's what I don't want for my kids. I want them to, at every age, just feel like they're excited to be in their body. They're excited to be, you know, and again, like, it's funny because people, some of the comments too, I was saying, you know, there's this discussion of, oh, sure, you can afford to get a this or that or whatever. And taking care of yourself doesn't have to be expensive. Do you no, know what I, mean? I, I, I totally agree. Because I think that when you, you know, whenever I do, I, I do the skincare live on a Wednesday morning on Facebook, but I just, I always say, whether you're going to spend $10 or $100 on something, think of 
this is a simpler thing, Brooke, but I talk a lot about massaging our face and touching ourselves and being in connection with ourselves. And, you know, I do these mad like scissoring massage and just feeling yourself, feeling the presence of yourself. And mm. there's many things you could do. I did this thing, I learned this thing from my grandmother, which um, was just this facial muscle thing, which is like A-E-I-O-U, but I do it now in a very mad way. And I go, A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A in my jaw and then E, 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 and feel the tightening of your jaw. And then the next thing you say to me, I thought I'd been hit in the jaw because my jaw was so stiff. And I was like, there are things you can do that needn't cost money, but it's the time you take, you know? And somebody commented earlier and just said that, you know, they feel they need a change and, and a high, uh, like, makeup and and clothing going to do that and i think i what i got from and what inspired me to start trini lund is i spent 20 years traveling 16 countries around the world from america doing oprah to the uk to india to israel to australia and wherever i went brooke women had this same thing that i was working with them on of just feeling more present in themselves and sometimes we're so nervous to take those emotional steps that just taking the physical steps first helps us grow into ourselves, which is that thing we were discussing at the beginning of this conversation of how can you grow into the person you really want to be? So whether you just do little things, you know, superficially, and then people, you know, we have to also remember that, like many people watched you, Brooke, you know, they never knew you. And I think that like getting from the comments now, it's like, when you know somebody's an actress, you don't know what they're really like. So this platform you've created allows people to see, there was this person I grew up with as an actress, and look, she's been revealing and emotive and talking honestly, and you know, I'm all decked up tonight, so I have to go to a black tie event, but usually, you know, I can look like shit, and I'll just start chatting, um, because it's important to let anyone know, where, however public your platform is, that there are days you wake up feeling shit, that you don't need to polish yourself up to feel good. But I think these little things make us get into a habit of more self-love. I also think that we've associated um, beauty and self-care, you know, beauty with vanity, you know? And- Yeah, and it's, yeah. And that, that, is, that is, it's the opposite. It's a form of self-care because you're taking time for yourself. And to be honest, I never knew this because I would get, sit in the chair, slap all the makeup, do my hair, I'd go shoot the cover, whatever, and then I'd take it all off and I wouldn't even look at myself. Mm -hmm. Because to me, if I reveled in what I looked like or if I thought I looked gritty, then that meant I was a snob and I was a brat and not, by the way, not from other people, my opinion. From yourself, yeah, your own. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that the, it's, we're trying to say, you know, if you, you have to, I know it's so kumbaya, but like you have to kind of love yourself. And one of the ways is taking the time. My youngest daughter is completely into beauty. I mean, mm. face mask, the washa or, 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 or whatever that thing is. The gua sha, the gua sha. <laughs> Every time she's out, I'm like, God bless you. Um, and, and she's always got a mask and then she's 16. Okay. The, <laughs> Face is like a baby's butt. It's like the mo. I was staring at her this morning like a crazy person because she asked to. My husband's not here, and she asked to sleep with me. So it's me and the dog who you just heard, and my sixteen-year-old. And like a crazy person, I wake up at you know whatever early, and I, I the light was just hitting her face, and it's perfection, right? It's just it's ridiculous how Dresden and gorgeous she is. She's sixteen, you know, and and it's funny, but she's taught me, even though she doesn't need a thing, but in a way, she's teaching herself. She does rituals, she takes baths, she, is, she lights a candle, she has a diffuser, she, she does this whole thing that I used yeah. to look for work. You know, it wasn't about taking care of myself. And now when you, it was when I was in um, Scotland doing a movie for last year, and I started taking baths in the morning before going to the set. And I thought it would make me tired, but just that ritual of sort of taking the time, settling myself, mm. putting oil or Epsom salts or whatever it was, just that moment, I, I made myself valued mm. for, the day, you know, for that day, rather than get up, go do your job. Everything's about getting to the next place. And, and the, the piece of it was just such a, a new way of thinking. For, yeah. 
you know yeah. and, and it is those little it's those little steps that you talk about and I have days when I have a, like today, Brooke, I had a really frenetic day. You know, things didn't go right. There were a lot of people asking my advice on very small little matters, which I'd love ask somebody else to deal with. And I got dragged down a rabbit hole, you know, and I felt very frustrated. I got through the day and I felt I haven't achieved enough. What I did actually do a lot today, but in my mind, because I'm a harsh judge myself. But I'm also working with somebody at the moment who's really helping me to try and be the best CEO I can. And, you know, it's, it's kind of really looking at from structuring the team and all kind of businessy things. But it's also, we talk about the self-love. We talk about, you know, he's, you know, there's this very sophisticated man, you know, Harvard educated, whatever, saying, Trini, you need, to, you need to take a bath more often and you need to get some of the magnesium salts. So it's very ironic that you're then saying what you're saying. Because I think what I do is my moments. Every Friday at six o'clock on our Instagram, I do a meditation with this really lovely shaman called Joe. And we will have like a thousand people around the world and we'll meditate together. And I always thought meditation was that sort of woo woo. And I, I hear the car and what do I do? And I hear the dog barking out. We both have dogs. What do I do? And we've done, you know, hundreds of meditations over two years. And we did it just coming out of lockdown. But when things were going on, we did it during lockdown as well, uh, remotely. But, you know, I remember it just brings you in this connection. And then we talk about community and connection is so important, but it brings you in touch with yourself and you're living in the moment. And it's a bit of this lovely man, Titnap Khan, who did The Road to Mindfulness, which is a wonderful book, which is very easy. It's very different from Eckhart Tolle, Oprah moment. It's literally about when you're washing your hands, just focus on washing your hands. It's so simplistic. So I now get up. I don't do this every day. I'm going to be honest with you. I do it maybe twice or three times a week. And I will not look at my phone straight away because I think that takes us away from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll get up and I will walk in the park, with Bassley Park near my house. And then at the end, I'll go down and I'll literally get calm or a different app, but I like calm. And I'll listen to the daily meditation. And it's like seven minutes. And I just sit there looking at the River Thames doing this thing. And then I get back and then I have my day. And whenever I look back and I'm now doing a bit of journaling, something I never thought I'd do, I realize <laughs> when I look back at those days, just that literally that's such a small amount of time, how much better my day was. Every single wow. time, Brooke, you know, and it is like your bath moment when you, you don't, we can talk about them and you and I could have heard all our friends who've done these baths for years and we haven't done it. And you finally do it and you think, actually, I get it. And then we mustn't forget it. We mustn't forget how good it is so that we well, can keep doing you know, it. In starting, in starting beginning is now, it's, you know, it's a startup, right? We, we, I'm, a, I'm alone. There's one other woman. And for yeah. two years, you know, she, she hasn't even gotten a salary. And she's, without her, I would just not be standing. But we have been fighting it in the trenches for this. And we're bringing it to the next level. But last week, right before Thanksgiving, Something happened to me in my adrenals or biochemically. I don't know what it was, but I was so stressed. Yeah. More stressed than I've, I was vibrating and sweating. And yeah. for four days, my husband was like, do I need to take you to the hospital? He said, what is wrong with you? And I, I was like, well, that's really going to help me if you ask like that. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. Which is Bugs. But um, I, you know, and I was like, it's not just menopause. It's not this. I'm, I'm, I'm just tethered. And, and I had to, I called an acupuncturist and who does, you know, different types of body work. And I said, look, I am not, I don't know. I'm not a meditator. I'm not a calm person. I'm type A. I, I said, but something's got to give. And mm. I'm going to see this woman this afternoon because I worried myself into such a friend. Yeah. Yeah. I, so hard and in out of, so out of my comfort zone that I was terrified and I was having like an extended panic attack or, or something yeah. yeah I'm not I'm the one oh you know what Brooke be tough get over it and it flattened me much like mm -hmm. depression did and had it not been for postpartum I wouldn't have recognized this since. yeah that feeling that feeling and I thought this is going on inside my system it's my adrenals it's a combination and going to an exercise class is not going to help it better i don't mm. need to be revved up i need to center yeah. it's just releasing a shitload of cortisol uh, and your body is getting 
so overwhelmed. Yeah. And I, yeah. I've never been undone like that before. And, mm. and I, you know, and, and afraid, afraid of failure, afraid, all of these things. It's a, we're what a, are you, Brooke? What are you most? Because the thing is, you are at the beginning of this journey. So you're, <laughs> you're kind of, do you feel you know what the vision is? I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. I want to just send to you. Do you feel you know what the vision is for the business? Yes. You do. Okay. You've written the vision down. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Do you feel the kind of people that you want to work with you in the business? I know exactly both the kind of people I want to and definitely the people I don't want around me. Great. That's so good. Literally do columns for when you're getting to a stage of interesting. Do you need to raise money to do the business? Yes. And that is exactly the stage I'm in personally for more than I can be at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, maybe, I, I sold my clothes to start my business and I had to sell my yeah. house, age 50, Brooke, a house that I had looked at for 10 years and wanted to buy and then bought and then lived in for three and then realized I could not afford to live in it be in debt with a mortgage mm. and start the business and I had to sell my house. So it's, and, yeah, our and that's too. a very, it's an incredibly tough thing because then you're saying I'm all in, you know, this is it. I am all in. I've, I've, I, I, I put everything on red. Um, and yeah. it is though each step at a time, they're all manageable. And my, my mm. um, lovely mum, ex, my husband, Belilah's father always said this thing, 99% of everything you worry about does not happen. Okay, that's my little wisdom advice. And weirdly, the one thing that I worried the most in life did actually happen, but that was the 1%. And he died, and that was that moment, you see. Yeah. And it's kind of odd how that person who gives this advice to always send to me and calm me, the one little thing, but 99 of them don't. Right. And that's what to focus on is those 90. Well, what, I mean, though, that's, I mean, you know, that one. And also, this is the other little thing that I always live by, which is, especially if you're in a position where you're trying to start something new in your life, whether it's deciding you just cannot be with that man who doesn't let you be the woman you want to be, and it's a time to say goodbye, and it's that fear of being on our own, and my God, people dating, oh, horrible, I'm 50, all that. But, or whether you're starting your own business, you never know what's behind the closed door. And that's... No. What I so had to remember, Brooke, when I was starting Trini London is I didn't know. So when I kind of woke up days of panic and I felt, where am I going to, how am I going to do this? And I mm -hmm. each day thought, have I given, have I done mm -hmm. everything for the day? And I'd have to really rest on. So yes, I have. I sent 30 emails. I've only heard back from two people. And then out of nowhere, something comes. And that's the thing. You don't know what's behind the closed door. And if you believe in your vision, and you believe mm. in your intention of what you want to do. Because I didn't go into Trinity London saying, I want to make a shitload of money and sell the business. I went into no. Trinity London, like the same with you, even though it would help us to be financially secure. I went in because I just felt the strength of my passion to help shift and help some women. And then everything else would follow. And you have that, Brooke. You know, well, you have that in spades, that sense of your commitment of what you want to do for women. And things will follow through. And, and I'm not, you know, it isn't the same as you. I mean, I use the word, you know, fear as a motivator, not, not necessarily as, as something that's going to stop me. But I've never been someone who gives up. You know, I, yeah. I, I double down. I work harder. And this was the first time I felt, oh, oh, my God, what if this is an embarrassment? If not success, you all those negative thoughts. And I, I literally within like, it was like a 15 minute turnaround. I said, that means I have to do it even more. I mean, it, you know, when I first went on Broadway, I was terrified. I mean, I'd never been on Broadway before, never sang and danced in, in front of thousands of people. And, and I, I was like, you know what, Brooke, do not give up. You study yeah. the best, you know, the best, all the best people and you learn from them. And I called my friend, my partner, this, this, my partner in the company. And I said, I'm even more committed to this yeah. now that yeah. we just lost. We just, I had a feeling about something that wasn't right. And I pulled us back and I let something expire. And it, we, we were back past square one, like negative 10. And, and I, 
it doesn't matter. I said, it doesn't matter. I, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah. So I think, and I mean, if I can feel this way, right? The, yeah. the, I, when I write in my books, you know, I'm not saying poor me and all this and I'll have me on a pedestal. This is like, this is happening. It, it's indiscriminate, you know, fear and, and, and really going out of your comfort zone. And if you read that book years ago, I was in rehab many years ago and I read this book called Fear the Fear, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. It was a book written <laughs> in the seventies. It was wow. such an inspiring book because I think there's something very interesting in what you said that we can go by the default of what has kept us going, Brooke, or we can go further and grow in how we then, so there's an element of that white knuckling, you know, like <laughs> I'm going to get that in white knuckling, but for the bodies, for the women we are today, that's really stressful on our bodies. So what I have to have learned, and I'm learning this literally in the last six months, actually, is how much stress am I going to put into that whole thing? Or how much am I going to just try and say, okay, there is another way because the default, that neural pathway, which always I did a certain thing and that was the way I got through it. And it was that survival instinct. Mm -hmm. I know for me, Brooke, I got to a stage where that still works, but it works for me with such a heavy weight to it. You know, oh. it, it worked with such a heavy toll. Exactly. That's right. It works with such a heavy toll. So, I have to kind of check myself sometimes and think, okay, like you know, I did that today. I was just about to go down this bloody rabbit hole and I had to just take a step back. I went back to my house, which is next to my office, just took a breath, wow. <laughs> took a breath, you know. I also do, I'm also sort of letting myself not go through the torture of things. I, I went to go learn how to surf a couple summers ago and I mean, I'm just afraid of it. And, and where we are out east is just, it's deep and cold and it's just very hard. Anyway, I wanted to conquer this, right? I yeah. want to conquer it. And there was a lesson in it because mm. I would, when a wave was coming to me and the instructor would say, you have to head right into it. Yeah. First into it, and then you just cut through it. And I yeah. would freeze and then get tumbled in like the washing machine. and concussion and all of this. And then I finally realized that that was a metaphor for going through something. But then I also gave myself the break. I don't like surfing. <laughs> I, don't like I mean, that I was about to say that to you. Are you, you kind of feel, I have to do this like, Della, but you don't fucking like surfing. So, so who are you doing it for? Who right. are we, that's interesting. Ask yourself in that moment, Brooke, mm -hmm. who are you doing it for? I, I was doing it for something outside of myself. Yeah, you, know? you weren't, yeah, yeah. To prove that I could be athletic and still do all these yeah. things. And yeah. I am miserable, I'm cold, I, I'm hurt. This is, I don't feel like, why, why do I need that? And, and it was such a revelation to me. I called my girlfriend, yeah. she said, why are you doing this? I was like, I gotta get over this. It's like a, it's a fear, I have to conquer fear. She's like, how about just sitting on the beach? And I was yeah. like, Oh, okay. You know, but there is that, there is that, the book, by the way, was called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, because somebody asked about the book. But there is that um, flexion point, Brooke, mm -hmm. where we have to let go of fear. All right. And I think that's something I want you to ask yourself. Because mm -hmm. for me, I had to let go of fear to do quite a lot of work I'm going to do. And that stops yeah. you white knuckling and it allows you the breath which you have. But it's just that it may, I don't know, I don't know what I want. I kind of want to say to you, let's check in once a week and let me support you and help you too. Because I know what it's like to start a business and I know that beginning bit. And I know you probably got an incredibly supportive husband, lots of people around you. But we have a mutual friend, India, who I saw this morning. Yeah. And I sent a message to you actually earlier just saying, do you want to chat earlier? Uh -huh. But you know, we've had friends who've been through things and they've been profoundly successful or they've taken a change in their direction and stuff. And I think I have got to a stage now where I fear less. And it it and mm -hmm. it's about each day it's like, how do I remove that fear? So like somebody's saying here, Williams, how do I let go of overwhelming fear? It, I think fear is the thing that prevents us moving forward, you it know? Does. 
it really it, does and um, sometimes it can be motivating as a you know for me the, you know it's different but i think it's very debilitating and again this very smart woman said to me she said stop living in the wreckage of the future mm -hmm. if you're not there it's not we're planning what if what if what if this happens what mm -hmm. if that happens you can't there's no there there you don't you and she said you sit there and you build up this whole scenario in your head and what happens is it's either becomes a self-fulfilled prophecy or, but you've taken all that energy and put it into the fear of the what ifs instead of saying, where am I right now? And what can I do right this minute today with it? And I think it's baby well, just steps. Even, you know, Brooke, the, just no. acknowledging it. Okay. It's like, also, there is that thing. And I always love this analogy and you will have heard it with all the lovely gurus you have around you and stuff, but it's that thing that, I am not my, my thoughts. I am not my thoughts. All right. So let's go down to basic. Mm -hmm. I am not my thoughts. Fear comes from, there's this little thing and it sits here on our shoulder and it goes <laughs> like this. And I want, and, and in a way, I literally sometimes do this. I go, shut up. I see you. I know what you're doing, but you are not me. So boom, you know, literally like, so that the, the concept of this book, to you feel the fear and doing it, is that like, do acknowledge it. You know, if you try to pretend you're not scared, that's so much more painful as a place to live in. He's like, yeah. okay, I'm scared, but is that my fear or is that my voice's fear? Well, is my, also, you know? The idea that your brain is a computer. I think it was somebody like Tony Robbins and I was in a miserable job when I was like 18 and I had to spend a lot of time and I just listened. And I'm not like a guru reading person. I you know, I just, I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to this. And he said one thing that made such sense to me, that your, your brain is a computer, that it, if you ask your brain a question, it has to come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. you, you know, how is yeah. the, you know, how is this phone made? I don't know yeah. how to make it, but I'm going to look at it and my brain is going to say, oh, it's rectangle and it's plastic and it's metal and it's, and it's computer. And so I'm going to come up, it may not be the right answer, but it's going to be an answer. And he mm -hmm. said, if you ask yourself negative questions, you will come up with very appropriate negative answers. You know, why? Yeah. Uh, you fuel it. Yeah. Right? And you actually answer it. Well, if you ask yourself, yeah. why am I a great friend? Why am I an inspiration to people? And you start answering those questions you kind of become more buoyed and your thoughts about yourself and your insecurities don't have room anymore, you know? Because we can, uh, my trainer, this trainer that I worked at said, a guy, you know, a woman can come into the gym and be fit and great and athletic and she will go by the mirror and she'll, she'll pick one little thing here and she'll just go, oh, look at that. And focus on this one little bit of her arm or something. Mm -hmm. He said, a guy will go by the mirror have like a freaking Volkswagen stuck to his stomach and he'll go, yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. And he's like, it's amazing. He said, when does it start? And I said, you know, this is embedded in us. Whereas when we start thinking about our, all the good things that we are to the people we love, right? To our children, yeah. to our best friends, to people on the street who come up and say, I, you know, I cried watching, whatever and and you give them a moment of your time and you you see them you know those are the things that we need to focus on because we all have the capacity we we've we have we have been good to other people and it's affected yeah. them positively we now really need to be kind of put the mirror back onto ourselves and say mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna treat myself the way i treat people i love <laughs> you know my husband would always say i wish you could just see yourself the way i see you he mm. said, if you could see the way I see you, he said, you'd, you'd think you were great. <laughs> and, you know, there's something he said for that, and that's what I try to teach our girls. Beginning is now that we, we want to see all of these women and, and really help them see themselves, you know, not just be seen to other people, but really to see ourselves. So it's, yeah. I think what you're doing is great. Um, I don't need to see a therapist anymore. I'll be phoning you every week <laughs> this time. <laughs> but it's like, I think it is that thing. I, I, I was on, um, uh, India and I are on this charity called the Princess Trust, but we do this thing, Change a Girl's Life campaign. And it's women supporting women to change girls' lives, to give them opportunities in their life. And I think it is that 
you do want to be a role model where you say the opportunities are endless. You've just got to decide the path you want to take. Because I think also a responsibility I feel we have is to also look at those people who are coming up in life and really feeling full of fear. I feel there's a lot more of that fear out there of where am I going, who am I, what am I, etc. And the more that you can feel this contentment, I feel very comfortable around my body, um, Brooke. I've always been a tall, gangly girl, but I feel really comfortable, you know? And I kind of think when I look back, did I ever feel uncomfortable? I don't know. I never felt one thing or the other. I was always like the tall, skinny girl with no tits, you know, That's, that was my role in life. Um, scrawny, really. But I am, I am, I have to say, like, there's a thing of when I, up to probably about eight years ago, I would walk and have this feeling I'm two feet from the ground. So when I land, it's going to be a little bit difficult. And what I have really begun to own now, only in the last few years, is when I'm walking, I'm like, you know, three inches from the ground, you know, I'll have a trip, you know, but it's like, I'm not gonna, my life is not gonna collapse overnight. And just to mm -hmm. tell that to myself and know, to, to tell it to yourself and one, is one thing, but to know it. It's taken me a long time to go on a journey to know it, mm. you know? And that really helps. And we have to pull on that when we're having days when we, we've lost all our knowledge. We have to have something in the tank. So it is about feeding the tank. It's mm. about having these moments we've talked out of living in the moment, you know, I. I don't in any way, Brooke, live in the past. I don't actually refer to it hugely. I will reference yeah. it in terms of, you know, where I, how it's got me to where I am today. But to me, life is sort of about now and it's about mm. the future. And I have, so, this is a really challenging thing, right? I'm going to challenge the people on this one who are women our age or a little bit older. But I have some friends who have begun to live retrospectively looking at their past and I do feel mm. sometimes that's when you feel in your present so you just keep talking about the past you know because the present is not maybe a hundred percent what you want it to be so it's like I would challenge you to think how can you make your present the thing that you most want to talk about you know what do you need to bring into it to make that the thing mm. that you most want to share well, someone said, you know, if you've got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, you're kind of taking a dump on the present, you know, if you <laughs> yeah. think about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, exactly, exactly that, yeah. It does, yeah. there is no, there, there is, it's only now, and I think that we're not necessarily taught that, and people belabor, and, you know, they ask me a lot of the time, do you have any regrets? I said, I, I no, I've made horrendous mistakes, right? But don't live in in that in the regret. Oh, shoulda, woulda, coulda, and oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. Or I didn't. absolutely not, because everything was a growing, learning experience, especially the really hard ones. Mm. You know, and and I'm proud of how I've gotten through it. You know, just yeah. just even just learning how to walk again. You know, when I was mm -hmm. or alone over COVID by myself in this room, nobody could visit me. I, yeah. I was in such pain and everything that could have gone wrong again, staph infections, blood clots, like no yeah. right, blood transfusions, like four blood transfusions. And I just kept thinking, what are you gonna do about it? Now what are you gonna do? You can run to walk. Yeah. Only thing yeah. you can And yeah. I'm, the people, you know, they change people every shift, right? And so you mm -hmm. constantly, there's people coming in and, and yeah number to them they're just doing a shift they're not in communication with each other and i thought i have to make each one of these people human i want to know mm. one thing about every single one of them i yeah. if they remember their name or do they have a son or their uncle's sick or you know something and then i yeah that because it was the only way to make myself present in a in a moment of it, yeah. not knowing if and to take it away from the kind of agony i'm sure that you were going through to get well but right, that, but yeah. then people are also saying, you know, what does it mean? What, were you going too fast? Did you need to slow down in your life? What lesson did you learn? And I finally said, everybody stop trying to make this have a meaning. 
Yeah, it just broke I, down when I burned. I felt I broke my I broke my femur. It doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't have to, you know, it is an accident. Shit happens. <laughs> and what am I going to do now to get through it? You know, and I, I need it. I didn't want to find, I'm not one of those people that needs to purpose and things and why. And, you know, just this happened. Now what? Like, what am I going to do? And so it took away the onus of having it to be, it just, stuff in the world happens. It happens to yeah. some people. Yeah. It happens to other people. And this just happened to me. I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't feel, it sucked. And I, you know, still don't have all of my equilibrium and everything back. But I'm here. You know, I didn't die. You know I mean? It was like yeah. it's amazing what your body wants yeah. to, and your body, by the way, wants to heal. Yeah. I think, you know, I think it's, it's like, there's a lot of people commenting, Brooke, and I think there's quite a few people on this live who are also feeling, they're feeling quite challenged at the moment. So I kind of would say that, you know, Brooke and I both have these communities of women who are on a journey with us. So join one of these communities is what I would say. Yeah. Get in touch with some new people in your life who can give you a new perspective, who can take you out of yourself and feeling just so challenged and give you some new perspective. Listen, you know, I've loved listening to you and we've got lovely people on our different channels that we interview as well to try and inspire our audience to just think about things differently and feel they get some takeaway, you know, which is some advice they hear because we can go days and the same piece of advice could be said to us every day. And one day we hear something because our mind is just a bit more open to it. And other days we're so way down but I just want to say that because I think one should always in the room go to that person who most needs our help and I do feel it's important to, to know that first of all you're not alone you know people are challenged every day there are things you can do to help you feel better and I just wanted to say that to, to do, well, that. do that very message and I always say at beginning is now I'm not the guru I'm the conduit the answers are all within all of us. And then we bring in experts and doctors and information and tools. But when you look at the, the comments that the people are making when I do these live um, Zooms, the comments are they're making, they're making connections amongst each other. And to me, that's the point. I'm the like ringleader. I'm the, I'm the, the conduit to that community, but I'm not the expert, I'm not the boss, I'm not the guru, I'm not looking for the attention, I'm just facilitating, and I want to be one of the women in the community. That's all yeah. I want. And when, yeah. you, when you hear it, when you hear other people's struggles or fears or opinions, yeah. whatever they're, I mean, it's yeah. so encouraging to know that we really are creating this village because that's yeah. what it does take for us there's somebody make. online brooke saying just i love this but i'm so alone and isolated and when i hear that from another woman i feel very heartfelt of what can we do to help you know and i think joining whatever community you might find around you even if it's a remote community um and an online community where you can just say this is me and i'm a little bit shy and I'm feeling challenged right now, but this is me. And on, on Trini London, the Trini tribes, what I find amazing, Brooke, that I see, and I see, I look at them all the time, and there's many different ones around the world. And they, you know, I see women's nurturing of themselves and how that changes. And so you might see somebody saying, it's the first time I posted a picture of myself in an outfit. I'm going to my son's graduation. I'd normally never take a picture of myself. And they take a picture and They've been inspired to dress differently by the tribe or, or something they've seen. They put on makeup for the first time. And these little things, it's like, that's why I do think these outside things help us inside because it makes us feel seen by other people. And people we don't know will see us the more present we are and that we look present. And then it starts a conversation. And then you don't feel, Sarah, so alone and so isolated because you suddenly make a connection with somebody. It's awesome. And that things start. And then people... it's a... 
Yeah, it's reaching out to other people. It's not being afraid to say I feel alone or, you know, and, and, you know, find a community and reach out and don't suffer alone. And it's hard to like yourself, you know, and, and it's especially in this day and age when all we do is compare and every photo on these things has a million different filters and, and we're all about not being who we really are. And that's a mm -hmm. danger because we do become invisible and you know, someone just said, I, I don't like me, herself, I think. I know, yeah. I'm reading that. And, and, but I don't and, like me, so why would break, anyone else? I... You, you, it's really, it's I'm you. I'm going to say to Effie, Brooke, I'm going to say to Effie, Effie, you've had the courage, darling, to write that. That's like step one. You've written it down. You've acknowledged that's how you're feeling. And we are the harshest critic of ourselves. We really are. And so there are ways you can shift that feeling and it is possible. And that's all that we, you know, Brooke and I say to you right now, it is possible to shift that feeling about yourself. And go make a list of the things that are positive about yourself. You know, we all have them. We can, there, there's, they're there. You know what I mean? They are there. There's, and you start small. Yeah. Also, who we are to other people in our lives. You know, I think that's important. We give a lot, and everybody in the world right now is so scared and it's so fraught. And you walk outside, and there's anger, and it's it's just anxiety and angst. And we just we're beating ourselves up, and we need to kind of lock arms with each other. And and each there was a um, a dove. Did you ever see that dove um, experiment with a forensic um, like a court for? Uh, illustrator and they put a bunch of women who had never met each other in a room and they were paired off into pairs yes and then was a, they, he drew them also yeah so they each one went in and they yeah. said you know describe the woman who you who's your partner and yeah. and describe yourself and he would draw do a drawing of how the women were being described by their partner and mm. how they described themselves and mm. every woman saw how she described herself you know, um, oh, my nose is too big and my hair is too, you know, curly and, and, and this and my chin kind of protrudes. And then the other woman would say she had the most beautiful Roman structured nose like you see in, you know, John Singer Sargent photos and, and the way her jaw, you know, and that her hair was like being na you know, naturally whatever. And one was a gorgeous painting and one was uh, like a hag, you know, and all the women cried because how they chose to describe themselves was based in negativity. And that that was so moving to me to watch these women just say, this is what I'm, this is what I see myself as. And that's just, yeah. it, you know, it's in us and you need to one day at a time and little by little. Mm. Little, little. little by little. Not, you know, it's, yeah. you know, so. Well, I, I think what you're what you're doing is is incredibly necessary. Well, let's say so point. I'd love to do that. Um, Great. <laughs> and catch up again. That would be wonderful. Next Absolutely. time I'll host you. On... Oh goodness! Yeah. Well, thank you. And so I'm nice to, to talk tonight. So nice to talk to you. I loved meeting your team um, at the event. The one young woman who who was uh, who raised a couple of the questions and. Uh, and it was yeah. very inspiring. We're very happy, happy to be with you too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take care.